Hi, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. One of the eight self-improvement lessons in that website is about effective communication. This video is one of a series of tips that I want to offer you about effective communication. I've learned this from over 40 years of studying this strange, mysterious process that we all do inside our skulls and between our skulls, communication. This tip has to do with a way that you can unravel and disclose a communication problem with somebody that keeps repeating. We are creatures of habit, we humans, and frequently when we get on a difficult subject, meaning stressful, confusing, um, one that makes us angry or scared or something, when we get on a certain topic with a certain person, often we repeat a communication sequence that is unsatisfying for one or both people. Uh, the sequence, a communication sequence is I think, feel, do, say something, you respond. I respond to you. You respond to me. I respond to you. This goes on until one of us ends the communication process. That's a communication sequence. If you start to look under the covers and take a look at the sequence that occurs between you and a person with whom you have trouble communicating chronically on some certain subject or a series of subjects. Like, you and I disagree on how to parent effectively, for instance. If you have trouble and you want to improve your outcome, meaning you get your needs met, your partner gets their needs met, here's a way you can do that. It's called mapping. You, have, uh, you need a couple of requisites. The first thing you need is to put your true self in charge of your personality. If you don't know what that means or how to do it, study lesson one in the Break the Cycle website. The second requisite in order to do mapping successfully is you need to have a genuine rather than a dutiful mutual respect attitude. You have to really believe that your partner's needs are just as important as yours, and his or her dignity is just as important as yours, regardless of age or gender or position. Meaning this tool, this tip, will work just as well with kids as it does with adults. So yourself in charge, mutual respect attitude, and the third of three requisites that you need for this tip to work. You need to study lesson two and start to become fluent in seven specific communication skills. There are other videos that summarize what these skills are, so I'm not going to cover them here. So, here's how you map a communication sequence. First, use the skill of awareness to say, you know, every time I talk with Jose about the car or whatever, going to the doctor, getting a dental checkup, uh, repapering the bathroom. Um, we get into a fight or an argument or he clams up or stonewalls or walks away and I wind up feeling frustrated, so does he or she. It doesn't work for us. Identify a person and an issue that you have trouble getting satisfaction on. Satisfaction, by the way, occurs when you get your needs met and your partner gets her or his needs met. The opposite of satisfaction is frustration. That means one or both of you are not getting your needs met. So, identify a sequence, a topic and a person, and then look at the sequence of events that happens between you. Start, take a piece of paper, pen, pencil, say, who starts this sequence? Either you do or, in this example, Jose does. Jot down objectively, as though you're a newspaper reporter, a media reporter. What does this person, the one who initiates, what does this person do? What do you think? 
They are thinking, they're thinking, they're needing, they're feeling. Notice where their E level is, below or above their ears. If you don't know what that means, see another tip video on that. And notice where their awareness bubble is. If you don't know what that is, there is a video tip that describes a very useful communication tool called an awareness bubble. Write those down as you begin to map this communication sequence. I have two columns. One is Jose and one is me or whatever. So you jot down, Jose begins, he says, he thinks, he needs, he feels, his awareness bubble is one person, two persons, no person. His E level is below the ears, above the ears. Jot down that information. Then switch your focus to you. In the second column of the mapping paper, write those same variables down about you. This is not about right, wrong, good, bad. It's about objective reporting. So don't make a value judgment. Just objectively try and estimate. I was thinking, I needed, I felt. What I did was, including eye contact, body language, facial expression, voice tone. You can get as detailed as you want on these maps. I did. My awareness bubble was one person, two persons, no persons. My E level was below the ears, above the ears. Okay. Then uh, move forward a frame in the sequence and then say, here's how my partner responded to me. Do the same set of variables. He or she thought, I think, felt needed. In order to answer this question about needs, you have to know the five reasons people communicate. If you don't know what those are, see the other video about that or the website, lesson two. What did this person need from me at this time? Where was their awareness bubble now? Did it change? Where did their E-level go? Was it below the ears or above? Did it change? So examine those variables about your partner. Then go back to you. How did you respond to your partner's response? List those same five or six variables. Repeat this sequence your partner's variables, your variables, your partner's variables, your variables, until in your judgment the communication sequence finished. Somebody walked away, changed the subject, um, did something that shifted your focus or your topic or your behavior. Okay? Now you've got a piece of paper with two columns and it shows you visually the dynamics that happened inside and between you and your partner. Great, what can you do with that? Now you got this piece of paper. Lesson two shows you a comprehensive list of over 20 types of communication blocks, things that interfere with effective communication. Use your map to try and spot whether your partner or you or both of you used any communication blocks. Here are a couple of quick examples. I stopped looking at Jose. That often can shift the dynamics of communication. I changed the subject. I raised my voice. I started criticizing. I, sh I clammed up. I became silent. I started doing something else. Every one of those inhibits effective communication. If you look at your map, you can probably spot four, five, or six of these blocks. Do not blame you or your partner. You're not aware of these. You didn't do them intentionally, probably. Once you spot these blocks, you have two options. One is, try the sequence again when you both are in the mood, but be conscious of these blocks and avoid those that you use. Example, this time I'm going to pay attention to my eye contact and I'm not going to look away. 
or this time I'm going to stay focused on our topic until we're done instead of bringing up old baggage or shifting to topic X, a different topic. Pay attention to your blocks. If your partner does communication blocks, consider respectful confrontation and offering healthy, healthy, helpful feedback. Jose, did you know that when we talk about refinancing our home, you stop looking at me? Did you know that? When you do that, here's how it makes me feel. That's a good place to use an assertive I message. If you don't know what that is, there's a video that shows you what it is. This is a quick overview of a very powerful communication tool that you can use and you can teach people that you care about. It's called communication mapping. It's built on the idea that each of us on certain topics with certain people will repeat a sequence of behaviors almost predictably. You can record us on video. Um, there may be local variations, but fundamentally we repeat the same sequence until the communication ends. If one or both of us wind up frustrated, meaning we don't get our communication needs met well enough, this technique can help identify why does that happen and the seven communication skills in lesson two can then help you uh, resolve or reduce or minimize or end the communication blocks that you and your partner are unconsciously doing. I hope this makes sense to you. I hope you're motivated to try it because these words will mean nothing to you. Trying this technique, communication mapping, will help you either endorse it or forget it. Note that there are a number of other communication tips that you can watch in this series. I strongly encourage you to improve your relationships and your serenity. Study lesson one and lesson two in the nonprofit, free, no commercials, break the cycle website. Have some fun.